All right, in the last video, we looked at using Dolly GPT for inference, and I gave you a notebook with that. Quite a few of you have asked for me to show how I did the fine tuning for this. So this will just be a short video of just walking through the collab of how to do the fine tuning, explaining some of the bits in this. So we're going to be doing a LoRa or a low rank adaption tuning. So this is like adapters that we're adding to the model. If you're interested in that, go and look at this paper, which will explain exactly how it works. The cool thing is this is actually built into the Hugging Face PFT library. So that's what we're going to be using to do this. One of the things for the data set. So a lot of you said that you want to try on your own data set. The data set I'm using here is the cleaned alpaca data set, which is based on the original alpaca, but it turned out the original alpaca data set had a lot of problems with it. So that a lot of the math had wrong answers, a lot of bad formatting and things like that. So people have gone through and cleaned it up. Now I should stress that this is not supposed to be used for commercial applications, this data set. While we're training a GPT-J, which you can use for various applications, the data set itself, because it was created with the OpenAI API, you're not supposed to use this for a commercial application. So use this as a guide to create your own data set that's quite similar to this. And if you're looking for how to make a data set, I showed how this data set was created in one of the Alpaca videos of how to create an Alpaca data set. So let's have a look at the code. So we're basically just bringing in the clean data set repo. We've got our key things for installing here. We want to make sure that we're using the latest transformers from GitHub. So don't use a conventional pip install for this. Install from source here and the same for the PEF library. And then we're going to be using bits and bytes, which allows us to load models in 8-bit and hopefully then not do distant future perhaps in 4-bit as well, which is really exciting if, if that comes about. They're the libraries that we're going to be using. First off, we want to basically just check out the tokenizer. So the model itself that we're loading is from the model and the tokenizer come from Aluther AI GPT-J6B. So I think from memory, I said, yes, so this is trained on about 400 billion tokens. It's certainly a decent model that you can test out and try out. And it's totally hugging face compliant, meaning that we can just use the auto tokenizer here and bring in the tokenizer for this. We can load up our data set by just basically using the hugging face data set package, load a data set from JSON, bring this in. So if you want to go make your own data set, go and study the JSON, how it's formatted in here, because then you can just basically swap that out for this kind of code. We've then got each of these things is basically an instruction, an input, or an output in the JSON. So we inject those into a prompt. So the prompt that we've got here, you can see that this is taken from a repo of how to train Alpaca Laura. And what this is just injecting it into a string so that we can basically inject this into the model. So you can see we've got the below is an instruction that describes a task paired with an input that provides further context. So this is just taken from the original Alpaca data set. And we're just injecting in the instruction. If there's an input, we inject the input. You can see there's two versions, one with input, one without input. And then the response is just the output that we would want the model to create. So when we actually use this for inference, we're just going to basically be using these bits up to response colon, and then we let the model generate it out. Obviously, when we're training, we have to give it the output as well so that it learns what kind of output it should be creating for that. So this basically just loads up the data set, runs it through the tokenizer with it running through the generate prompt for each of these so that we get our data set. And we can see that running this thing through, we can see, okay, what's actually in that data set. And we can get a sense of, okay, what's actually there. Next up, we want to set up the actual sort of model. So the model here, I'm bringing in a number of things. I'm bringing in obviously the PyTorch. We're bringing in bits and bytes so that we can load this model in 8-bit. And then we've got a few things from Transformers. We're just going to bring in the GPT-J for causal language modeling to load the actual model here. And we're also going to be bringing in from PEF, we're going to prepare the model for 8-bit into training and our LoRa config and get a PEFT model here. Okay, setting up this part, we want some hyperparameters. 
So this can be a little bit tricky is that we're going to basically accumulate the gradients so that we're not just doing it one step and then calculate the gradients. We're going to have a batch size, which is here is set to 128. And then a micro batch size is how many can I do on a forward pass? Now, actually on a forward pass, I was training on an A100. You could actually go higher than this. If you're training on a 3090 or something like that, you possibly can go for eight on this one, or you want to change it down to four. And then the gradient accumulation steps is basically deciding, okay, if we want a batch size, how many of these micro batches do we have to go through and accumulate the gradients before we actually do our back prop and update everything? This is something that you, you can play around with. You can play around with the epoch. So I've set this one to be a short version, but the previous version I trained was at three. I find that two gets you pretty much there. Certainly for just trying it out and seeing how the model is, if you don't want to wait around for ages, then you can go for two epochs. One epoch wouldn't be enough though in testing. We then set off a learning rate and we then set off a cutoff length for the sequences. So in this, we're going to basically be just inputting sequences of 256 in here. Now, the next few parameters are the bits that relate to the LoRa config. These are to do with the attention head. So the way that the LoRa actually works is it goes through and it puts in new sets of weights or what's called adapters, in this case, on the attention heads. And we want to basically decide, okay, how big they are. So this is what's called the alpha scaling part of it. And this is for the actual attention heads themselves. We then want to set, because they're what we're going to train. We're going to freeze the rest of the model when we're doing the training. We're just going to train these adapters. So we want to set a, a LoRa dropout rate for that. So generally that would be somewhere between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 as you're going through this. These could actually make this bigger, but obviously that's then going to take longer to do the training as you go through. Once we've got that set up, we just bring in the tokenizer again, bringing in the actual model. So you can see here we're using the GPT-J for causal language modeling. I'm loading it in 8-bit so that we can do this. And then we're going to basically prepare that model for this PEF training or for prepare the model for integer 8-bit training. We then basically pass in our LoRa config. So these are things we've set up already. So we've set up for the attention heads, the scaling. The next thing is that we want to tell it which modules we're targeting in the, in the actual model. So this model does actually have Q projection and V projection in there that are named correctly. So it's easy to target these. We're passing in the dropout. And then the main one here is we're passing in the task type. So this is doing causal language modeling, right? We're predicting the next token and setting it up to do that. We can now basically take the model that we had up here and turn it into a PEFT model. So we're passing it in with this config. So this will basically now convert it to have the adapters built in there. And this is what allows us, this is what we're actually training, right? These adapters. We set a pad token here, and then let me just put a little bit of a space between it. And then we're basically just bringing in the clean data set. This probably should go in this cell below here. And we're then going to basically take our data, shuffle it. We're going to generate the, the prompts for this. We're going to truncate it with the max length being 256 that we set up in the hyperparameters up there. Now, if your data set was much longer, you would set this to longer. So it turns out that in the alpaca data set, and I'm pretty sure this is true with the cleaned alpaca as well, that approximately 96% or something of all the examples are 256 tokens or less. So it doesn't make a big deal to cut it off at 256 tokens here. If your data set was much longer, then you would basically go for a longer, maybe for 512 or something like that, or even out to a thousand plus tokens. We're also going to be padding anything. This is setting up our padding for the actual sequences as well in here. So once we've got that, we've got our data set. And you can see that now when we look at this, our data set is different from up above in that we've now got actual input IDs and attention masks. So this is what the model needs for training. You can see that the data here is just under train data set. That's how we can access it. And you can see it's just under 52,000 examples in this case. So the next thing up is our trainer. So this is the Transformers trainer that we're using here. 
we pass in our model. So at this stage, we're passing in the LoRa model itself, obviously not trained or anything yet. We're passing in the train data set that we've just prepared. We're passing in micro batch and the number of steps for gradient accumulation. So that's the key thing that we're going to be setting up there. We want to have some warm up steps. We don't want to start at the biggest learning rate. We want to warm up the learning rate. So we're going to have a hundred steps of warm up in this. And then we're going to train for two epochs in here and then passing in the learning rate and passing in a directory name where we're going to save checkpoints. And we can set then also the total number of steps for logging, but also the total number of checkpoints that we want to have saved at any point. So that basically just, as you're going through, it keeps the last three checkpoints for you. We then basically have a data collator, which is what we're using to basically take in the data set that we've assigned up here with our tokenizer. We're not doing MLM masking, so we're not trying to predict something inside the sequence. We're predicting at the end of the sequence. So we set this to false. We then basically say that we're not going to resume from a checkpoint. If you did actually save a checkpoint and you wanted to come back and use it, this is where you would set this to be true here. And then finally, we're just going to save our model out at the end to a particular folder. Once you start training this, you'll see that goes on and the first hundred steps, you probably won't see a huge difference. And then afterwards you'll start to see the loss come down quite nicely. If you're doing more steps, you could certainly do that in here. Once you get to the end and you've got your training done, if you want to save the training, so if it's just on your local machine and you don't want to push it to the cloud or anything, then fine, you're done. You can then basically load from this part here. And so we've done model save pre-trained. You could also put in tokenizer save pre-trained in there, and then you would just load it like any hugging face model. If you do want to push it to the cloud, you're going to want to basically log into the hugging face hub. So get a token on hugging face for this. If you just go to your settings in Hugging Face, you can see your tokens, you can create a read-write token, which will allow you to write a model, save a model up there. And then finally, we just basically push this model to the cloud. And you'll see, because what we're not pushing here is not the full model, we're pushing the LoRa adapters to the cloud. So the size of these is actually very tiny here. So this sort of explains what's being saved to the cloud. It's still going to need to download the original GPTJ at this stage. Perhaps in a future video, we'll look at converting it so you don't need to download the other model. You've just got it all in one model. But here you would still, just like in the inference notebook that I showed you yesterday, you would then basically download the GPTJ. And then from that, you would download these weights and join it together and then use it for inference in that case. So. Hopefully this explains how to do it. As always, the notebook for this is in the description. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If this was useful to you, please click and subscribe, etc. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.